What's up everybody? Thank you for stopping by my channel today. My name is Daryl and we are moving ahead with this cabinet built-in. Uh, I had some uh, videos that were to be posted but I had a little video problem. I lost some footage so we are moving on with this one and hopefully that I won't have that problem with this one. So if you see this one, everything's okay. So uh, I have uh, milled up the lumber for the drawer fronts on the cabinet and also I milled up the lumber for the doors that go on the cabinet and also for the transom. So today we're gonna we got a box here and we got a box this box is from uh, veneersupplies.com and it's got some uh, veneer in here and some glue in here and and some tape in here veneer tape and uh, we are going to look at, open this box and take a look at this veneer and see if I agree that it should be used for this project. And if I do, then of course I'll use it. Uh, if I don't, then I'll order something else and then I'll cut and then come back to this video. So anyway, so let's open up this box and see what we got inside. Now when I, I like to go, I have a few different places online that I go to look for veneer. Uh, Veneersupplies.com is one of them. They're probably the first place that I look. They've always done me right. Uh, you order from them and uh, you get exactly what the photo shows. Uh, they'll show you a photo of uh, the veneer you're actually going to get. And uh, when it comes, it is that veneer. So uh, I, I really like doing business with that company. And of course, they're not sponsoring this video or anything like that. But uh, I do like them. So I thought, well, if I'm going to endorse it, uh, maybe you would like to go there too. If you're doing a project like this, and uh, you know you can kind of trust them. So, anyway, so this is the way it comes. So I'll, I'll uh, pack with some paper, and then you can see it, it laying in there. So we'll take it out. There's other, other things being shipped with it. So they have uh, put it inside the veneer. So this is my tape. And let's get rid of that. And then inside here is my glue. Let's see if I can get it come out. <laughs> All right. So veneer and my glue. Let's get rid of the box. So this looks like uh, a lot like um, painter's tape, and it is really. Um, it's really stretchy. So uh, when you put when you're putting your two pieces of veneer together, it will hold those nice and tight. So I do like it. I use uh, painting painters tape a lot, but I thought I'd try this one. And see how it works. And this is the glue that I use. Uh, this glue here is a thermal glue. So you put it on both sides just of the the project you're working on. You put it on the wood. You put it on the veneer. You let it set up and then put the veneer on there and then run over with a hot iron and it, it glues itself down to the board. So I don't have a heat, uh, of like a vacuum press type system. I want one, but I, I, it's not in the budget right now, so I don't have that. But uh, I do use this uh, particular setup and it works real well for me. I've never had a failure yet, so uh, I keep going with it. but. Uh, in the future I'd like to maybe up my game a little bit with veneering because I do like veneering I have a lot of fun doing that but uh, let's unroll this and see what it looks like and then uh, we'll go from there and I'll show you the parts that I have milled up so anyway so this is basically way and I think I've done another video before about receiving veneer and I think I ordered it from a different ven different company but uh, I always have, I've always had good luck with, with uh, the companies that I've worked with for veneer. Um, so it'll come rolled up like this, and you kind of just unpack it. And then it's going to unroll fast on you, so you got to be really real careful with what you do. Uh, and try to have it out in a spot like this where it'll unroll, because then you can see it, it comes open real fast. So uh, anyway, let me uh, roll it out here. So this is our veneer, and uh, so it comes in. Uh, I got three sheets here, 
I don't know if you can see it, but I got three sheets here, and uh, that's what we're going to use for our, our rails and our styles for the doors, and I may use uh, it also for the drawer fronts. So I got uh, I got some wide veneer. Uh, this veneer is just it's about uh, 12 and 7 eighths, so that may be good for our drawer fronts. I'll have to measure that. But if I if it doesn't work, then I can book match a piece and for the two larger drawer fronts, and we can make that work. So let me stop the camera here, and then I'll show you those parts. Okay, here's our parts here. Uh, this is the, the door, the door parts here. And these are the styles and rails. And down here, these three here are the drawer fronts. Now, the video footage that I lost was this uh, gluing up these parts together to make them wider. So I've rough cut all these. I um, They're cut to roughly three inches wide, these uh, rails and styles and I'm gonna I think I'm going to uh, cut them down to about two and a half inches um, we'll see I'm thinking about it you know it's one of these things where you kind of design the project as you go I don't really draw anything out uh, nothing like this I I didn't draw it out so I'm not following any plan but uh, you just kind of uh, eye it and whatever looks pleasing to you that's what you, the way you go that's the way I've always done it and I've always uh, liked my choices so we'll see now this is veneer here is the veneer I had from making the uh, cabinet face frames and I've cut off all the straight grain and now it's left with kind of like the flat grain here so flat cut grain so I don't want to use that for this project I thought there was going to be enough for this project but there's not so I ordered some new so but I did lay this old veneer out here or not old, but the other veneer out here, just in case, uh, you know, I can maybe try to use it for part of these. I don't know, really know. So anyway, that's where we're at now. Okay, I have uh, one of the uh, styles here. Actually, it's two styles because this one in the end is going to be cut in half. And uh, it'll be the drawer top or bottom. Or sorry, not drawer, but it'd be the door top or bottom style. So this will be a one door here, and this will be the other door on the other side. So uh, it'll be used for that. So uh, what you do is you kind of find your flat grain. I want a lot of flat grain in, in, my, in my frames. And then for the drawer panel, that's where I would use the flat portion of this um, veneer. Or... I would book match them together. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do there, but we'll see. Now I do have some veneer left from the the uh, top uh, carcass uh, where the coats go. Remember way in one of my other videos, I showed you all the nice grain that that had, and you'd have to go back and look at that video. But uh, I have some of that veneer left, and I kind of thought about using it for the drawer faces and for the panels that go for the doors but we'll see what i choose i'm not really sure where i'm going to go in that direction but anyways there's a lot of choosing going on here but uh anyway let's move forward so i take what i do to try to figure out how i want to use this veneer is of course i look at it i lay it out and take a look at it and see the look at the grains and every, grain in the veneer and i try to find the straight grain you can see this part straight this part is straight, and then in the center is where more of your flat uh, sawn kind of look is at. The cathedral is there. So what I do is I take my board, and I lay it up here, and I try to just lay it down in a, in a place on the veneer where I think it's going to be pleasing to me to look at because my, all my frames I want to have more of a straight grain. And then the panels in the draw and the do drawer fronts, I want to have this more cathedral pattern. So I'm going to use this sheet here to, these couple of sheets anyway, to uh, make my frames with. And then we will see what we got left over in this uh, cathedral pattern. Maybe I can make something out of that. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's a lot of choosing. A lot of, this is not a cheap job either. This was, uh, this whole 
you know, probably, I think the sheets were like $24 a sheet, something like that. I think that's what they were. So it's not cheap if you're going to do something like this. So you want to make sure that you choose wisely and use your veneer wisely. So if I go back over here, this other, I at some point want to find a project for this. Um, but uh, right now I have nothing. So I have two sheets under here that are basically the same. This has some straight grain, but it's not white enough for me to use uh, on the rails and styles that, for the, these doors here. So uh, we're going to, that's why I ordered this other veneer. So anyway, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay all these out and then uh, we'll glue some veneer on. So what I like to do is I like to uh, get it cut out, get it cut a little bit oversized so the you know it hangs off on all four corner all four sides of my workpiece and then I will uh, take it over to the router and uh, use a pattern bit and uh, or a flush trim bit and we will trim off that excess and that will give me a board that I can run through the table saw and get my proper thicknesses and lengths and then we can move forward with putting this together so the first step is to lay it out here on the veneer get the veneer cut and then uh, put the veneer on the workpiece and then move forward so I'm gonna do that right now and then I'll come back okay I've got some pieces of veneer cut uh, these two here are our styles actually there are rails and these are styles and our rails will be cut in half. So our grain will be continuous on this piece, these pieces here. So when you're looking at, when you're looking head on at the doors, the grain will follow from one door into the next door. Now, my rails, they won't, they won't have that. So I won't have a perfect grain match all the way around the, the frame or anything like that. But across them, they will. So I have two of my rails uh, I got the veneer cut for them and I have two more to do so let me do those two more and then we'll come back and then we'll move on to preparation for applying the glue and then applying the veneer now I have other video out there that shows me doing this but uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it if you have any questions leave them in the comments and by all means tell me what you do how do you prepare your uh, veneer uh, to be applied and what systems do you use and uh, you know I, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants a lot when it comes to this kind of stuff because it's all personal per, personal uh, feelings you know how I want the grain to look and uh, what I'm happy with and what I'm not happy with so um, when I once I get this the, once I get the glue applied and I, I can then lay this down on here and kind of get it situated to the way I want it to look like I want the grain to run straight down the whole whole workpiece, and I don't want to crook it in any way. I don't want the grain going starting here and coming down and ending in the center over here on this part of the piece. So I want to make sure that I get them straight the way I like them. So what I do is I'll like this came with the tape on it already. What I'll do is I'll tape both ends to try to keep it from cracking and uh, tearing or whatever. I guess you could be tearing and it kind of holds it together for me and then I'll make a mark uh, where my center mark is I'll make a mark on the tape so I know where my center part is and uh, I'll center up the this part here uh, but you gotta remember when you're doing this that like this the way I do it is these are a little these are cut a little wider than they're gonna be alright and then they're also longer than they're gonna be so when I make my cut and I want my grain to match I've got to cut it all down to the proper size first and then I can cut my pieces apart okay so I don't want to cut them apart first or anything anything like that I want to keep them together so that's what I'm going to do so yes you gotta and I'm not by no means a professional at this at all uh, I'm learning as I go and I've made some mistakes along the way and hopefully I won't make one with this project you know hopefully I'm getting better and I won't do that um, I don't piece a lot of things together. I haven't got to that part, that point in my woodworking where I'm making fancy tabletops and things like that. But I do 
want to do that, I am interested in doing that. So maybe somewhere down the line I will do that. But uh, you're seeing uh, a retired guy doing some woodworking. You're not seeing a pro. I have no orders. There's no clients. Um, I'm doing this for myself. So I have the time to mess around with it and make it exactly the way I, I want it. But uh, I'm always looking for suggestions and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, how would you do this kind of type of job. And, you know, that's what my whole YouTube channel is about is, you know, I'm retired and uh, this is the thing that I'm doing today. So don't expect me to be on one, one subject uh, every time that you watch a video because they're going to be bouncing around from place to place. Um, uh, I know you guys are probably all wondering what happened to the 6 meter repeater. Well, it took a back seat to this. My wife wants me to get this job done and I want to get it done. So it had to take a little bit of a back seat right now for this project to be completed. And then I can get back to the 6 meter repeater. I have some grounding for the tower I, I'm trying to get lined up so I can do that project too. But I have to get this thing done. It's been uh, too long in the making trying to finish it. So. Uh, I want to get this finished, so I'm going to keep steaming ahead with this one. There's not a whole lot left to do, uh, so I'm going to just keep steaming ahead with this one. And you, there might not be a video for everything, but uh, that's what I'm doing now. So anyway, that's where we're at. So let me cut up the other two uh, rails, and then I will come back, and then we'll we'll put some glue on these things, at least a couple of them, and uh, we will. Uh, iron them on and then move on from there. And then the next time I guess we'll be cutting them down to the proper size. Uh, we'll trim off the, the excess and then cut them down to the proper size and then start assembling that part and then I'll have to make the uh, panels that go in there. So they're going to be a frame and panel doors. Uh, not a big, it, the way it's laid out it's not going to be a big big panel in there because uh, there's not a whole lot of room to try to fit fit all that in there. So. I'm trying to work with the proportions to try to make it proportionally, proportionally look proper. So uh, I don't want it to look funny or anything when you look at it. So uh, there might be, uh, right now I'm shooting for a, for a width on my styles and rails for about uh, two and a half inches, maybe two and a quarter, somewhere around there. So, all right, so let me get those, these other ones cut up and then I'll come back. Okay, I am back and I uh, have my veneer laid out here on the table. So what I did was I, I put uh, some blue tape on each of the ends and then I blue taped them down to the bench. So when I'm going over uh, and putting the glue on and going over the roller, nothing, the ends don't roll up and they don't move on me. So that's how I like to do it. So uh, that's where I am here. So I got those all taped up and uh, taped down. And then over here on my table saw, I have all the uh, wood parts and uh, ready to go over there and put some uh, glue on these. And then we'll let it set up. And then after it sets up, then we'll start ironing these on. So I'll be back in a little bit here. Okay, we're gonna start putting this on. So I'll just put it a little bit on at a time. And you don't have to really rush much, but you do want to make sure that you get everything covered. So I just take it a little bit at a time. And you don't have to be putting a whole bunch on. Try to meter how much you put on. You just want to cover the, cover the surface and uh, check for any imperfections and uh, move on. You can see. Uh, by having the tape, or by having these uh, pieces of veneer taped down, uh, it helps me to uh, roll it without it going anywhere. Now this will curl up a little bit because there's a little bit of moisture in this glue, so the veneer pieces will roll up a little bit, but you don't have to be concerned about that because, uh, like I said, when you go to stick them down, on the other part, it will uh, adhere to it, and then you can iron them. So, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I hate this way of doing it. I'm not a big. Uh, I guess I would have been a bigger fan of the 
of the uh, vacuum press system. Uh, I think it's a lot faster than this. A lot more money involved in it. You know, to buy the equipment and the bags and everything. But once you get into the system, then, uh, you know, you can just do whenever you want to do it. You don't have to keep paying for it. But, you know, my, you know, really the only thing I'm paying for here is the glue, really. Uh, you get an iron. Get your uh, wife's iron out, your husband's iron, whoever. And uh, I'll go buy your own at the thrift store. <laughs> That's what I should do. I took my wife's iron. All right. All right. It's not really my wife's iron. It's kind of our iron. And uh, use it for this, but I should have gotten a look at a used one at the thrift store. That would probably be a better choice. But I know this one works. So uh, I use this one, and uh, at some point I might get another one. I don't know. We'll see. I should have a backup. Uh, I don't know how long this glue can can set here on here before you have to, you know, adhere it to the other side. I really have no idea. I've never uh, experimented with it. So I got no clue. But you can see this piece here is curling a little bit. That's fine. It ain't going anywhere. That's another reason why I like to glue them down. Or I tape them down. Just so they don't go anywhere. And just be careful. Trying not to get any glue on the other side. Because that is the side that um, is going to be viewable. So you don't want glue on that. So just be careful. Get your glue on there. And this stuff will set up fairly fast. It says on the instructions, you know, how long it will take. But uh, I don't remember it offhand. I guess I could try to look over there. But I want to get this done. <laughs> uh, but I've watched a lot of people. I don't know if there's a lot of uh, videos online, on YouTube or online in general, about putting this... Uh, just doing this type of uh, veneering for the heat set uh, glue here. Uh, what is it called? It's called uh, iron-on veneer adhesive uh, heat lock is what it's called. So uh, I don't know if there's a lot of videos out there of people doing this. But uh, I think I already have at least one video of me doing it for the... Uh, for the uh, the face frame for the cabinet, and I've used this system many times before on other projects, and I have not been disappointed really. So let me uh, work on this side, and then I'll move over to the uh, doing the actual pieces, and then we'll let them set, and then we'll iron this stuff out.
Ah, shit. Okay, it's looking okay. Let's move over to the the actual wood parts. All right, it's basically the same as the veneer. You just uh, put a little bit on and just roll it out onto the surface. You don't need a whole lot, just enough to cover the surface. If it sucks in a lot, if it like the grain sucks in a lot of the glue, then you might want to put a second coat on. Uh, when we get done, when this sets up, I'll take a look at it. And if I think it needs a second coat, I will not put any second coat on the veneer itself, but I might put a second coat on the wood. Because, or actually, I guess it's both wood, but on these parts here, because the grain may soak up some of the moisture out of this glue and soak the glue into the into the grain itself so I might need to put a second coat on but uh, I'm going to try to do this one without putting a second coat on and uh, I think it will be just fine but we'll make that determination after this sets up so you can see it's not really that difficult to do um, I've done this quite a few times so yeah it gets a little nerve-wracking when you're trying to glue, when you're when you're trying to uh, uh, iron, doing the iron-on part, because <laughs> you don't want to keep the iron on it too long. Uh, if you leave, due to the fact that this has some moisture in it, if you leave the uh, uh, iron on your piece for too long in one spot, it tends to dry out the veneer and. The veneer will start to open up, uh, pull away from itself, it, if you know, kind of shrink, and you don't want that. So you just want enough heat, long enough to adhere the pieces, and then uh, adhere the veneer to the piece, and then um, that's enough. You know, you don't need any, any more than that. So basically, this is all there is to it, and. Kind of, you know, kind of something to do on a lazy Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Come out to your shop and do this. There you go. So there's three of them. I'll do the other two, and then I'll come back. Well, there you have it. I got the uh, glue on all the pieces here. So I'm going to let them sit, and then we'll walk over here to the bench, and you can see my veneer here. Is also done and you can see that it's starting to uh, set and dry so you can see that the, it's looking a lot different now so we're gonna let them sit for a while and uh, you can tell this is what I'm using and you want to make sure you use fresh stuff if you got this stuff sitting around for a while pitch it and buy some new 
They come in this. They come in this size too. I usually buy this size, but I'm going to be doing some more veneering, so uh, I got the bigger, uh, the bigger bottle. And then like it comes in gallon, and I don't remember how, what the biggest container you can buy, but for normal work, you could buy a few of these or one of these. And just keep it around. Don't keep it around very long. In fact, uh, I need to put a date on this so I know when I got it. I don't like to keep them around for more than a year. Hopefully I'll use it up before a year. But I don't want to buy too much in case I do one day go to a vacuum bag system. I don't want to have a lot of waste, so, so you can see my, uh, my parts here. I just finished them, so they'll, they'll set up. And try not to drip it off the edge. If you do, Try to clean it up before you actually adhere the the uh, veneer because when you're running it to trim it off in the router, when you're running it uh, to try to trim off the excess with the bit, you don't want the bit riding up on the glue. So you want to try to get rid of that. So once that's all sets up, I'll scrape that off. And I don't have to worry about it when I'm doing the flush trim on it. All right, so let's let it set and then we'll come back and iron them on. Well, I've got the piece here that I'm going to veneer, put the veneer on. And it's all dry as you can see. I can touch it from both sides. There's nothing sticky about it. So I have my, my iron here and the iron is set to cotton setting. So it's fairly, fairly hot. And what I want to do is I want to take my veneer and I want to lay it out on my part just make sure that I got it somewhat uh, centered and don't have too much sticking out on each side. All right, so that's pretty good there. Yeah, we don't, we definitely don't want it to be off center. So I take a, you know, a few minutes to just go over it and check it out and make sure it's where I want it. There's no big hurry, as I said. All right. And I keep my ends taped. And then I take an old t-shirt that I've cut up, and I just lay it over. And uh, I don't want to, there are, you know, you could, you could take the iron and just iron over it like you would edge banding. But I don't want to do that, because I don't want to burnish it. This is pretty, a pretty, uh, you know, this is metal. And as you're running it over it, you might have the tendency of burnishing it or shining it due to this this uh, iron, the metal. So I just put a, a barrier in between, and the heat's still going to transfer through. And I just start ironing it on. And uh, you know you want to probably want to make sure you start in the middle, which I did not do. But you want to just bring it out that way. If you have any wrinkles or anything. Uh, they all work their, their way out. So I start over here in the middle and I'll just give it some good heat and uh, we'll work the iron back and forth. There's no big hurry. You can see uh, I'm not scorching it by holding it and that's another reason why I use the t-shirt is because it's less likely to scorch it. Uh, but we don't want to leave it on too long where we start to dry and shrink the, the veneer because then uh, you'll have gaps and you might even see your glue in there. So you don't want that. So we'll go over it and then we'll take a look at it. And then if we don't like it, or if there's an area we feel needs more heat, then we'll go back and do more heat. So I kind of go at the angle here at the very edge of the board and just try to get my veneer down. And then sometimes when I run it over the, uh, um, the flush trim bit, I will come back and I will reheat it again just one more time to make sure everything is is nice and adhered and then we'll move I move on so I'll just show you how I do this one and then I will do the other ones and then we'll we'll move on so always keep the iron moving and uh, you can see that I have no problems with uh, any kind of uh, lumps or anything like that like it's uh, 
it's it's going down real nice and then uh, I want to try to hit these edges a little bit and uh, get them nice and adhered and then after that we'll let this sit and cool off and then I will run it through the flush trim uh, bit and make sure that everything is nice and flush and then we'll be ready to cut it down to its size you know to the final size and fit these into the opening all right so that's about all it takes so it's nice and adhered and that's hot so I don't want to do too much touching but everything looks good now there's no shrinking or anything like that so when I go to sand it of course you want to be very careful sanding because this veneer is super thin and you'll sand right through it so you want to make sure you you uh, just give it a light sanding nothing too great and that is also the reason why in the face frame I put a, a first two coats of uh, shellac down and that is mainly just a grain filler and a sealer so I can come back then and sand the uh, sand the um, shellac down and I'm not really getting into the veneer as much and I can put as many coats of the of the uh, shellac down as I want to smooth the surface and then once I get it smooth then I can go with my finished coat so right now this one's ready to go it's all down and ready to go so I'm gonna set this one aside do these and then I'll come back with all our veneer glued to our pieces we're now going to run this through the router and trim off this excess I know this video is getting long so I'm not going to video at all but uh, I just want to show you how I did it so I have the bit in there and, and uh, I'm going to come in and trim this excess off and then when I'm done we'll be ready to cut these to the proper size so I got to do some measuring and uh, get these pieces fitted and then we'll put the pieces together, make it into a, a door, and just fit those uh, with no no panel in them. And then after we get that all kind of looking good, then we'll make our panels. And we'll also have to put a rabbit inside these, inside here, you know, on this, whatever edge this is gonna be to accept our panel. So that's where we're at now. So let me get these done and then I'll come back. All right, this is my first piece, and uh, I got it all trimmed back. And you can see that I did have the veneer side down, and that's because my my uh, bearing is at the top of the bit, so the bearing rides across the this end, this uh, side of the, the workpiece, and then trims off my my extra veneer. And also, I was I was doing what's called a climb cut, where I'm going against. The rotation of the blade you want to be very careful when you do something like that when you're doing it with veneer it's not so uh, you know you the possibility of grabbing the wood and shooting it out of your hand and maybe hurting you or someone else or something else in your shop is pretty there's not much chance of that happening with the veneer uh, but I would not do that <laughs> there's no way I would do that if I was just trimming the wood if I was making some kind of profile or something, I would not be doing a climb cut. So normally you would go in this direction to trim it off, but uh, or ex yes, you'd be going in uh, this direction to do your cut. But if when you go in the backwards direction like this, you're doing a climb cut. You want to make sure that you're very, your hands are out of the way, of course, when you're running this. But you want to make sure that you just take it slow. So you can see that I took off a little bit as I as I went, and then I went up and 
made contact with the, the uh, part and then allowed it to trim it flush. So you just got to be really careful with that. And the reason why I do that because there's less tear out. It's less likely to rip it from the, the workpiece itself and create a problem. So I've had issues before when I would come through this way. Uh, it would just, the, the uh, bit would just rotate and just tear my veneer at the, at the, uh, at the end here, at the side where it meets here. It would tear it and cause issues. So I've begun to, to do the climb cut and just uh, allow it to trim it nice and easy. But you got to take your time and you got to be very careful and slow and keep your eye on that bit all the time. Do not take your eye off of it. Um, when, you got your, when you're looking at the bit, keep your eye on it. And that way you can see if your fingers are getting too close, you see it. So you want to make sure that you got your hands w well away and you, you can move it out away from the bit and uh, you know reposition your hand but don't the minute you take your hand off your eye off that bit is the time you're gonna run your finger into it so you don't want to do that and you and I hold it lightly and you you could s probably see that I didn't really have it very very you know a, a firm grip on it because if this thing does catch or something I want it to just go just go out of my sight and uh, I don't want to I don't want to be holding it so so hard that if it does grab it, that it pulls my finger right into it. I want it to just just shoot it out from my hands. So I use a really light grip, try to keep my hands away from it, and if it does catch, then it just shoots it away and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to go do the rest of these and then we'll come back. Well, there you go. I got all six pieces veneered and the excess trimmed off. And our parts are ready. So now our next steps is to run them through the table saw and get them to the right thickness. And then we will go in and do some measurements in the house and at the cabinet. And uh, we'll get our sizes for our frames. And then we'll cut these to those proper sizes. All right. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, moving along here with this project, I want to get it done. I got so many other things to do. I got some big plans for the future. And uh, even in the shop, I got some big plans going on in this shop. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I got some big plans for this shop. And uh, we'll come back next time. I got to veneer these drawer fronts and try to get them uh, installed. I don't have any hardware yet. I know I got to my wife and I got to pick out the hardware and get it ordered so I can get it in here so when these are done I can start using them so anyway we'll keep moving on it and once I get done with this then I can go back to this, doing some ham radio stuff for a while so I can back and forth back and forth that's the way I am and it's um, uh, mowing season already I've been out mowing and we're trying to clean up around our pond and around the property some trees and saplings and stuff like that we want to take down so been very busy thank you for being here today if you like this kind of content please subscribe and give me a comment that's the most important thing uh, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer your question uh, sometimes I get some comments that are uh, you know they don't agree with my thinking which is fine <laughs> um, but uh, Anyways, it's nice to hear from everybody anyway, and uh, I'll try to make more videos. I think I got my camera problem solved, so I can get back on track again. But thank you for being here today, and I hope to see you back soon, and we'll catch you later.